Slocan Valley here, we have a set of large watersheds, drainages, creek valleys coming in from the east into the main valley. Each of those valleys in the south has a very steep south facing slope that looks directly into the sun, is hotter than most forests here, drier, steep shallow soils, very unique place. Now we think they were maintained by relatively frequent fires for many thousands of years. Since we started as a society suppressing all fires more or less, these areas have suffered an ingrowth of young coniferous trees. Behind me there's a few large Douglas fir and ponderosa pine trees that should be here on the site with a few small trees, shrubs, grasses, you know, a very open forest. The ecological restoration concept is to reduce the density of the young conifers and to reintroduce fire to the site. At, at this time in history, um, when we're reintroducing a tool that people are not familiar with, there is some bad concern from people because people actually are unsure about the results so there's a tendency both from the forestry's perspective and for the wildfire services perspective to be cautious i think people are afraid of fire because we've been telling them for the last hundred and some years in canada probably for the last 70 years that that fire is something that you should be afraid of and uh, we've taken it out of something that's natural and that's part of you know what happens in a healthy ecosystem and we've made it as something that we should fear as something that we should uh, make sure doesn't happen and if you put yourself as a resident for a few seconds and you realize what you've seen since you've been growing up and the media and the pictures and everything that you've seen when you see fire it's usually something that's very very destructive it's really rare that we've been fed images of fire as a tool or fire as something that's part of a natural ecosystem's evolution. So when we're conducting uh, prescribed fires, uh, it's uh, a fairly long process. We start in the planning stages and talk about um, what makes sense for the unit that they're, they're looking to burn. So. Um, I kind of help go up there and, and provide some expertise in terms of what um, a good burn boundary looks like and they tell me, okay, this is the area that we'd like to burn and, and we work together on that process. Then we go out and um, we look at uh, weather windows for a good opportunity to, to burn and once we have a little bit of a, a lead time and get a good idea when that weather pattern is going to set up, then we can actually start getting it ready for, for the actual burn. On the day of the burn, it generally starts by establishing a black line perimeter around the whole unit that is going to be burned. That means a strip that's been ignited by hand and burned to an established fire guard. It creates an area with no flammable fuels at that time, and when the fire moves up from below to that black line, it stops, because we burned everything within the black line. It's a safety perimeter around the outside. After that black line was established, some of the interior of the burn was lit up with drip torches, and most of it was ignited using an aerial ignition system, which is the helicopter dropping small flammable spheres back and forth across the hillside in a pattern. And one of the general principles is that the unit gets ignited in strips. We don't want to start at the bottom and burn all the way to the top in one bite. We take 
A graduated approach lighting back and forth across the hillside so the fire only has 50 or 60 or 100 meters to run before it hits another previously burned area from the same day. And we can say, okay, situation's good, light another strip beneath that. This will be part of a strategic landscape level field break and our fire behavior modeling and investigating fire movement paths in the valley said to us that fires tend to go right through this area. This site is supposed to burn on a regular basis. The shrub species here benefit from an occasional refresh. The part of the shrub above the ground is killed by the fire. The root crown and the part beneath the ground are perfectly healthy. The fire does not penetrate deep into the soil, it doesn't warm the soil very much, and regrowth and sprouting of young tender shrubs is almost immediate. That tender is very important. This is an important ungulate late winter range. They love eating the fresh growth from the last few years. We're about to create a veritable banquet for the deer and elk that inhabit this area in February, March, April. From a fuel management perspective, this work greatly reduces the fuel load on this site and will result in a much lower intensity, lower flame length, slower moving fire when this area burns in a wildfire. One thing that we're realizing as we enter climate change is pretty much everything here is going to experience a fire in the next century or so. It's when, not if.